Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is good to be with you as we continue making our way through God's Word. It's day 177, Romans chapter 16. Now, by the time this releases, I'm actually back in Maryland, and it's uh, the Lord's Day, June 26th, and Lord willing, I'll be ministering uh, among you as well, again at Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, preaching on the fourth commandment uh, to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So, but the background here will tell you that I recorded this while on vacation in the North Georgia mountains. So you might realize, wow, he got a lot of these devotionals recorded while he was on his vacation. And I just wanna, if you think that means I didn't really have a vacation, that I was working the whole time, not true, not true. It's just that the early morning hours, and not so early morning, but basically the morning hours are pretty relaxed and laid back and people are slow to get up and get moving because it's vacation, right? So uh, that gives me time to do these recordings. And I am getting ready to go to Uganda in a couple of days. So by the time this releases on June 26, I'll be leaving for Uganda for two weeks in two days. And so I am trying to get ahead on these devotionals as much as I can uh, in anticipation of the upcoming Uganda trip. So all that by background. Um, Romans 16 is where we are today in day 177, our final our final devotional in the great book of Romans. And I hope you've been able to watch all 16 of these and I've got them in a special playlist on YouTube and, uh, and on Facebook so you can find them together. Let's pray and then let's dig into God's word. Father, thank you so much for your word, which is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, giving life, imparting wisdom. Your word is life to us, and we thank you for it. We pray, Father, that you would be with us and help us to uh, understand your word and to respond in faith and love to your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at Kencre, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their necks for my life to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epinatus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ Jesus before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the churches of Christ greet you. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you, as do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greet you. Now to him who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thus ends the book of Romans. So we have a lot of greetings that take up the bulk of this final chapter of Romans. And you might get to a section like this and you might just glaze over and say it's a bunch of names, a bunch of people I don't know, I don't know anything about them. But what I'm impressed by when I look at this list is how many people work hard and contribute actively to the life and ministry of the church so that someone like the Apostle Paul can do all the traveling he did and preach in all the places that he preached and write all the letters that he wrote to all the churches that he had started or that he supported or that he encouraged or that he blessed along the way. There were so many people. We all know the Apostle Paul. He wrote 13 books in the New Testament, half the number of books in the New Testament. He wrote all these wonderful letters, but without a Phoebe, a Prisca, an Aquila, a Mary, an Epinatus, an Ampliatus, an Urbanus, without all these other people, right, what, what could Paul have done? He would have had no place to stay. He would have had no financial support for his travels. He wouldn't have had a gift to bring to the, to the poor saints in Jerusalem. So it is, it, the church is the body of Christ, and there are different people called to different ministries. And we know that, and we hear that all the time, but it's real. Like every single member of the church of Jesus Christ is to be an active, involved, supporting, committed member. You can't just have one that doesn't work. Like, you know, and this is, this is the real life examples of this. All of these people who get thanked. Now, one of the things that shows up in these verses that I feel like I have to address is verse 7, which says, Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles and they were in Christ Jesus before me, or they were in Christ before me. So this well-known to the apostles could also be translated as well-known among the apostles, because the word used there is among, uh, as in within the, the company of the apostles. And so some people have said, well, Junia is clearly a woman's name, and if she's well-known among the apostles, then she's a well-known apostle. She's an apostle. See, we have a, a female apostle, Junia. And so all these people who think that only men should be pastors of churches are wrong because we have here clearly a female apostle. First of all, you're trying to squeeze a whole lot of doctrine into Romans 16 verse 7 into an, an expression that is ambiguous at best. And I like the way the ESV has translated it because Junia is a girl's name, a female name. Some, some translations have translated it as Junius to try to make it seem male. But nothing in verse 7 indicates that Andronicus or Junia were apostles, just that they were well known among the apostles. They were well known to the apostles. The apostles knew who they were. They had been in Christ before Paul. They were part of the early church. They were very important. Beyond that, did you notice how many women Paul greets and thanks here from the very beginning? Phoebe, uh, Prisca, Mary, Junia. I mean, we could go through, but there's a lot of women who are really involved. And so you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an apostle. There are no apostles in the church today, but you don't have to have that office or that calling to be a very valued and very valuable member of the church. One of the things that I think happens uh, in more egalitarian circles, to use the buzzwords, where they say that 
all offices in the church are open to both men and women. First of all, you're ignoring 1 Timothy chapter 3. You're ignoring Titus. You're ignoring Jesus' own decision to appoint 12 men to be apostles. Uh, there's really no record in the New Testament of women serving as pastors of churches or preachers of the word in the church. That's just not, it's not there in the New Testament. You can try to stretch it in a few places, but it's so clearly going against so many other passages that it's really just an inappropriate exercise to try to engage in. You're trying to force something into the Bible rather than seeing what the Bible has to say for itself. But I think the deeper problem with that is that it reinforces this mindset within the church that the pastor is the only important person. No, not true, false, very false. The pastor is just one person in the church who has one calling and one role to play as the preacher teacher of the word. It's an important role, I take it very seriously, but every member at Forest Hill Presbyterian Church is vital to the work of the church. The people who set up and run our sound, the people who lead worship, the people who are there to set out chairs and Bibles and hymnals, the people who are there to set up and staff and provide for our food table after church, the people who greet people when they come in the door and give them a bulletin and help them find the nursery and the bathrooms, the people who take up the offering, the people who count that offering, the people who do all the work of the church. The work of the church doesn't happen without everybody contributing. So that's what's very important. And men and women are equally important within the kingdom of God because all offices and all roles are equally important. And we need to really believe that because one of the things that causes divisions and creates obstacles contrary to doctrine is ego trips, right? When people get on ego trips and they think, well, I'm the most important person in the church. The church couldn't function without me. Really? Are you Jesus? Because that's the only person with whom the church could not function. Uh, without whom the church could not function, however, however you say that. Jesus is the only absolutely essential person in the church. Uh, everybody else has a vital role and an important role, but not a role that would allow you to say, well, if I wasn't here, the whole thing would fall apart. No, it's just not, that's not, that's arrogant <laughs> and foolish and false. And we've seen that again and again, sadly, throughout church history as people who regarded themselves as being very prominent and important were removed by the Lord uh, because of their arrogance. And so watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles. So, so often it's egomaniacs who are puffing up themselves in their own position. These persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Be obedient to Christ. And there's this great promise, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Now, Jesus did that definitively on the cross. But we are the body of Christ. And as we are in Christ, when Satan is finally and fully defeated, cast into the lake, of burning fire and sulfur for all eternity. When that happens, we will be there judging. We will be there reigning with Christ. We will be there crushing Satan by God's grace. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Notice you won't crush Satan under your feet, but the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So in the meantime, be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. This mirrors the language of Jesus where he says, be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. Don't do wrong, right? But walk in wisdom and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The close of Romans is a great blessing, great benediction to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. How are we strengthened? Uh, three days ago when we were in Romans 15, we talked about how we need endurance and encouragement. How are we strengthened? We're strengthened according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Where does that come from? It comes from the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed. And through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations through the Bible. As the Bible is preached, as Jesus is preached, as the gospel is preached, we are strengthened. Strengthened for what? For the obedience of faith. 
verse 26, to bring about the obedience of faith. We're strengthened so that we can obey by faith. You can't obey without faith. And you can't have true faith without obeying. Faith and obedience go together. Don't separate what God has put together. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. What a wonderful book Romans has been. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you have benefited from our study in it together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Romans. Thank you for writing it on our hearts by your spirit. Thank you for the life of Christ we see in it. Help us to live out the truths that we have seen in this marvelous book as we cling to the one, Jesus Christ, who is the good news from you, who is our salvation. Help us to cling to Jesus and walk in the obedience of faith. To you be all glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today as we've wrapped up Romans. We are looking forward to getting back into Leviticus. We'll have three days in a row in Leviticus coming up, 25, 26, and 27, coming up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Have a blessed day in the Lord.